I want to post on the YouTube channel because you're rolling right through all of that stuff, Solana. I am, Hawk. All right. I want you to post. Again, you can subscribe to 560 WQAM on YouTube and we post clips from the show. People get to see everyone. And I, I, I mean, we're ready to come back. The commercials are over. I'm watching. I'm home today, but I'm watching Solana in studio. He is having a full length radio program, I'm guessing, with Clay Ferrero. Like, I mean, just paying no mind to the show. I, I, I'm raising my hands, exasperated. <laughs> And, and I don't know, well, I mean, what could you guys possibly have been talking about? You know, me and Clay, we go back. We had to catch up on some things. I was peppering him with some preheat material for tonight. I, you know, you, know, you just never know. You never know what... Uh, well, I what... know that the show was coming back, though. That's huh. the part that I know. Yeah. 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 Wait, well, he's post coming... all the video. He's I want you to post now. all the video. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> Clay Ferrero's on the Toyota of Hollywood hotline sports anchor and reporter for WPLG Local 10 here in Miami. Hello, Clay. What's amazing is, like, I actually turned off the, the earpiece on my phone. I actually wasn't even listening to him talking. So, like, I don't know what he said either. <laughs> you know what's funny is now that we get this snapshot of Solana in studio. Crowder's off today, but when we're both here, if we're not both in studio, if, if Crowder and I are either on location, you know, at FLA Live or we're both home, we get the snapshot of what's going on in the studio. And we never used to get that. We could see him through the glass, but if we were home, we wouldn't see anything. And if we were in the studio, you know, because he's behind the glass, we don't hear anything. Well, now we get to hear what's going on. We get to see what's going on. And so I get to see him greet you know, all the different guests we had, I don't know, Katie Meyer on yesterday and, and he's got this cute little, hello, Coach Meyer. It's Solana from the Hockman Crowder <laughs> Show, 560 WQAM. How are you today? And then there's, you know, Mario Chalmers last week. And it's like, uh, Mr. Chalmers, uh, three seconds, please. <laughs> Thank you. you know, like you get to see him in all his elements. Man, when he called you, he launched right into preheat. <laughs> He knows he he knows where the uh, the extra money is going to be coming from. So like <laughs> he has to, <laughs> that's when he's going to He's turn auditioning. Into... <laughs> he's auditioning for Sunday nights on 10. So this is the funny thing. On Sunday night, I actually wanted to send this to you before before we went on today. Um so Sunday night, Will was working uh his heat sh his heat show and David, our producer who normally does the face-off stuff with me on Sunday night, had laryngitis. So I literally did this bit where I, I did first take debating myself for, <laughs> for face off. I need to send that to you because it was the most ridiculous thing ever. But it was like, you know, when you have something kind of go wrong, you can do one of two things. Either you can try to cover it up or you can lean into it and realize that the audience, it like let them in on the joke and realize that they're, you know, they're not idiots and, and they're smart and they're going to pick up on stuff. So we just completely leaned into it and whatever shred of credibility I had left is now completely gone. Well, who won the debate? You or you? Uh, well, it was me versus no tie clay and, uh, and no tie clay. <laughs> The the the, <laughs> the 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 denouement the, uh, the the peak of the debate was when No Tie Clay was going through his list of Nickelback songs that he would use to to punish his Miami Heat teammates, <laughs> and uh, he he picked Kryptonite, which is a Three Doors Down song, not Nickelback. That's so, funny. That's you know, a funny bit. Did you know that when did, that. did No Tie Clay know that when he picked it, or or did no, he run aware? No, no, well, no, real real tie playing no Clyde, no no tie clay knew it. But that was gotcha. that was the joke. That that was the ridiculousness that we were uh, digging deep into. So That's like funny. all of that said, that Solana would actually be a step up from that. Like that would be <laughs> he, he would be a clear step up from no tie clay. Oh, thanks, Clay. That means a lot. <laughs> what um <laughs> Let's, I, there, there's a few things I want to talk to you about because I know you like college hoops too, but let's talk uh, Heat for a second here because it's a pretty big game tonight. Um, and you had Cleveland taking care of Brooklyn yesterday. So the, the Heat are in striking distance of the sixth seed. So do they get the sixth seed in your opinion when the season's over? And how much does avoiding the play-in game matter? 
So if I had to, to bet my mortgage on it right now, I'd probably say no, only because like I took a look at, at what was left on the net schedule. I don't think they're passing the Knicks. And you look at what's left on the net schedule, and so they've got to play Cleveland at home again tomorrow. But the rest of their schedule is really soft. And actually their toughest remaining game after that, I believe, is the 76ers on the last day of the season. And so, like, who knows if the 76ers will even have anything to play for that day. So it may be one of those weird things where it's like, yeah, you, you know, you're playing, you know, Dwayne Dedman maybe starting at center for Philly in that game. So, like, you're looking at the schedule and how many home games Brooklyn has left and how soft the schedule is. It just feels like we're going to look back at that game that the Heat lost to the Nets before the All-Star break, and that will ultimately cost them the sixth seed. I hope I'm wrong on that. Um, but that it's just feeling more and more like it's going to cost them the tiebreaker, even if they beat Brooklyn in, in their remaining game. And so it's just like, it, there's a lot that they're going to have to overcome. Not impossible, but like, if you're playing the, the, the odds at this point, you would say no. Now with that said, I don't know how important it is to avoid the play in game anymore, because w- what you're seeing is like Boston's kind of, kind of hit the skids and, you know, Philadelphia has, has surged and they may end up taking that two spot. I don't know that with how each team is playing that there's like an appreciable difference between them at two and three right now. And I also feel like if, if Atlanta ends up in that eighth spot, I just have a hard time seeing Miami lose at home to them. It's just the way the matchups go. I, I would just feel a lot more confident about them grabbing that seventh seed if they're playing Atlanta at home. So, you know, I guess the bad news is I, I think it's, it would be really difficult for them to avoid that play in. The good news would be if you do beat Atlanta, I don't know that the matchup is is vastly different given how both those teams are playing right now. I'm with you, Clay. The, the idea of avoid Boston or Milwaukee at all costs is no longer as important as it once was. My only thing is, I mean, we saw what happened with Chicago the other day. I'm not entirely convinced that the Heat, even if they do get matched up with with Atlanta, and we saw how they beat them twice a couple weeks ago. I mean, they're, they're so they're so capable of having an off game that, like, I, I don't think there's any guarantee you get the seven spot and you're out of the play-in tournament. You know, I, I mean, I think they're more talented than those teams. I just don't know if there's any guarantee because they're so capable of playing a dud. I mean, they did it the other night against Chicago. Can Who's I tell you my favorite behind you? Is that Will Manzo? Well, that's why I'm, I'm leaving. Cause I, well, because I'm in the newsroom. I just got back from uh, from from UM. We were down there at the Watts. Because that Will when, when was that Will making that. all that noise? No, that was that was David Lang. He was. Uh, I don't Ruby know. He, Lang he, he all of a young. sudden got his voice back. Oh, miraculous! Well, I, I mean, he sounds like <laughs> he <laughs> he sounds like he just hit puberty because it's like coming <laughs> back, but it's like uh, what, what, on. Uh, it, you and I may be the only ones who remember the episode of the Brady Bunch where where that they was hit the example I was just going to use, and I was I was afraid that neither <laughs> of you guys would know it. <laughs> when so it it's time of it. to and none change, of your listeners are... you've got to rearrange. <laughs> so my favorite Solana thing I got, it, it, and this, he does this to me all the time now. It's I'm with you, Clay. But he's not really with me. Like, he's about <laughs> to, to, to argue with me. <laughs> so, like, the second I heard him say, I'm with you, Clay, I'm like, here we go. <laughs> then I'm you gonna know have to, that like, he's got an opposing <laughs> viewpoint. Well, I'm still, I'm still interviewing, so I want to suck up to you a little bit. But then I, I want to give you my, my, uh, my view. You're absolutely full of crap, but I can't tell you that because it would, like, take away any chance I have of, of furthering we, we my career. On. We had Karate on, like, last week or the week before, and – Solana did some sort of question, you know, question where he also makes a point, and Crotty was just like, "That's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard." <laughs> Cannot agree with you at all on that, Solana. The, the, the funny part is, Clay, you would have agreed with me. It was about Tyler Hero's inconsistencies. <laughs> you know what I love? Crotty is like if you talk to Crotty, he's really good at what he does. If you talk to him off air, he is just like. He's so funny. He is so like the <laughs> the the uh, the sarcastic sense of humor, the dark. Yes. Like it, some of the stuff just can't come out on the air. I wish people could like sit and talk. He's the I he's the nicest Rob. guy. He's one of the nicest guys in the world, yep. but also like 
one of the sneaky, funniest, like watch your back because he's going to hit you over the head with a joke when you're not expecting it. Yeah, Um, I love Prady, and I gave him holy hell. Still do for Virginia, you know, being a one seed, losing to a 16, but he got a little bit of cushion with this tournament because of Fairleigh Dickinson. He's not the only uh, team anymore to have lost to a 16 seed. Trust me, as a Virginia Tech fan, I was like holding on to that forever, and now I've got nothing. <laughs> to do. So, so not only do they have the championship, but they're not the only team. And and like the loss that Purdue had was so much worse than than what yeah. Virginia had. I think they were missing like their best player, and um, you know, anyway. But you know, I, look to, to Solana's point because we we kind of got off track. I, I agree that man, they just have this this ability to to look like a JV team sometimes. I guess what I'm kind of holding on to is the idea that. You know, in a game like that, they wouldn't go out and lay an egg. And and look, I, maybe that's asking too much of this team from what we've seen this year. Let's be honest. I mean, it, it really, it's been it's been difficult to watch because they're just some nights. Like I don't buy the whole. You know, when when Spo comes into the post game news conference and he's like, "Oh, well, Heat fans got their money's worth again tonight." Well, no, you you got your money's worth against the Houston Rockets. Like you got your money's worth against teams that. Like, you need to be beating those teams and, and resting guys. And I understand that, that it's the NBA. Like, I'm not, I'm not disrespecting an opponent. But, you know, what I'm saying is, like, if you're a really good team, you take advantage of those situations because you don't know what's going to happen in the fourth quarter if you're having to play Jimmy Butler in a game when, you know, the records say you, you shouldn't have to. And it's not that it happens every once in a while. It's, like, every single game. It's, it's difficult to find – games that where they blew out teams they should have and and that's that's not a good thing so you know i i, I solana's got a point i i guess i'm just kind of looking at it from before my big concern with being in the play-in was oh crap you're gonna have to play boston or, or milwaukee in the first round if you do get out of that now it's more like okay well it's not going to be like the end of the world based on how those teams are playing just don't don't play milwaukee if you can avoid it the only time that they blew someone out in recent memory, I had Jimmy Butler over 23 and a half points. He had 23 points in the third quarter. He never got on the court again. Who was that? Who were they playing, Solana? Memphis. Memphis. I mean, just blew that. The only time they blow someone out, I've got the, the only way I could lose that bet was if they ran up the score. They haven't been able to run up the score on anyone all season. I was the cause. So, of that. I mean, I think we know the answer now. For every game, the rest of the season, you take the over on the points on one of the starting players, <laughs> and, and it's going to be a over in the and, fourth yeah, quarter. Watch and, them, watch them ride the bench in the fourth. Come um, on, Clay Huff, Ferrero your, is your with money us. or the Heat winning? Like, come on, my money. Let's talk about something that uh, Crowder and me and Solana talked about yesterday. There was an Ask Ira question in the Sun Sentinel yesterday that it's kind of something that we've talked about on this show, and I know you've talked about it plenty on, uh, on Local 10. Um, someone writes into Ira Winderman, everyone other than Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Tyler Hero should be gone. That's the question, which is really a comment, okay? And <laughs> Ira's response is, but the greater question is whether the trio of Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Tyler Hero is good enough to compete with the elite of the East. Is it up there with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and say Marcus Smart? Is it up there with Giannis Antetokounmpo, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton? Is it up there with Joel Embiid, James Harden, and Tyrese Maxey? And that's what you have to weigh. This is what Ira's writing. And if you don't think it is, then you might have to reshuffle. The good news with players at that price point is that can be traded for players at that price point. So the question is, because I get it, Bam, Jimmy, Tyler is the one where you can debate a little bit. We were, we were saying yesterday, you know, so Tyler's had some off games, but when you do need clutch shots, he's there to do that. So for me, he's worth any salary and, and any heartache, headache that he gives you during the game because he hits the big shots. But can the three of Bam, Jimmy, and Tyler be enough to compete in the East and if it's not, then you really kind of have to reshuffle it, as I was saying, no? Well, I, I think there's some nuance to this, and nobody wants to, you know, everybody wants the hot take answer. Here's the answer. Yes, those three as a core are good enough to compete with the best in the East. The problem is not those three. The problem is the heat of 
done such a woeful job with the the supporting cast players contracts it's not that that having bam jimmy and tyler hero is the problem it's that you paid kyle lowry way too much that you couldn't move him at the deadline nobody wanted him you paid duncan robinson way too much his contract is no longer viewed as a filler contract that can help you get a star it's now viewed as something you got to give up multiple first round picks just to get off the contract so it's not and max Struess isn't playing well this year not that that was a contract issue but Look, this is it, Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, and Jimmy Butler, the same trio that we saw last year that, that was one shot away from going to the NBA Finals. I just think that, like we talked about before the season even started, they did nothing to supplement that supporting cast. They just decided, okay, well, you know, even a year older, we think Kyle Lowry is going to be better. You know, P.J. Tucker is leaving. Okay, we'll slide Caleb Martin to the four, even though he's clearly not the body type as a four. Caleb Martin can bring you a lot off the bench, as we've seen, but he's not a four. And so, to me, it's not the trio. It's what they've done around them. Now, with that said, I think the real problem then becomes, okay, can you upgrade the guys around that trio with the way you've kind of put yourself up against the the hard cap now. So that's going to be the real challenge. It, can you do that with these three, or are you going to have to trade one of those three just in order to, to create some flexibility? So, you know, I don't think it's about those three as much as it's about the, the whole picture of what they've done with, with salaries and, and with contracts that has really made it difficult for them to, to upgrade those, the talent around those guys and give them the, the best chance to succeed. All right, we're going to run out of time. Clay Ferrero is with us. We're going to run out of time, so I'll leave it up to you. What would you like to comment on for your final moments here in today's segment? The World Baseball Classic, the March Madness, South Florida being a hotbed of March Madness action, or the lawsuit against Buffalo Wild Wings for false advertising. You have a customer saying Buffalo Wild Wings, the boneless wings, are obviously not wings at all. Ridiculous lawsuit. You can't sue for getting better than what was provided to you on the menu. It is awesome <laughs> to see what's going on with March Madness right now. I was just down there, the women's team supporting the men's team as they left. Fantastic to see. World Baseball Classic, amazing. Don't ever tell me South Florida fans won't support baseball. Get a team and a franchise that you can get behind, that you trust in. Baseball fans are down here, and they came out in droves. Love it. Out. So you're you're saying... Thank you, Jim Rome. So you're saying that <laughs> you can never be accused of false advertising if what you're advertising is actually lesser than what you're getting. It doesn't matter that it's false because what you're getting, you're uh, intimating that boneless wings are better than bone-in wings. So it can't be false advertising because you're actually getting a superior item. I'm intimate, yes. It, well, and also that, like the, the 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 nomenclature of wing, like what you're not eating, an you're not actually eating the wing. Like it's you know drumstick. Yes, you like, are. Well, I okay. You're not eating like you're eating a part of that 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 structure. Whatever. The wing. But yeah. Me, it's the like wing. You're you're the getting the wings better are coming quality from, of like, meat. The thigh or the breast or somewhere, and the wings are coming from wings. I mean, you're ordering wings. You're not getting wing meat. Okay, go go to Publix Hawk. I know, like you, you're you're super wealthy, and you have people do all of your shopping for you. Go to the grocery store. You compare the price between wing meat and breast meat, and then you tell me that that lawsuit's going to hold up in court. <laughs> well, then it's like then it's beaks or something. It, I, I'm it's not wings. That's, <laughs> no, that's all I can tell that's, you. That's McDonald's. That's chicken chicken McNuggets. <laughs> chicken McNuggets. Have you seen that fire. pink paste? I, the pink paste that they use to make the chicken McNuggets. I love it. People send me that video because oh. McNuggets are great. People send me the videos of the McRibs being made and they think it's going to scare me out of it. And I'm like, it just makes me hungrier. I remember going to see the movie Super Size Me. I saw it at the, the Shadowwood 16 oh, yeah. in Boca at Glades and yep. 441. There's a McDonald's in that plaza. My wife and I, we watched Super Size Me, and it's supposed to turn you off to McDonald's, and look what happened to him after 30 days. And I got out of there and made a beeline to that McDonald's in the outcars <laughs> of that plaza. I was never hungrier for McDonald's in my life. 
That's amazing. So, like, uh, you were the one that, like, M- McDonald's actually benefited from yes. that. Yes, that, I would uh, not yeah. have had McDonald's had that guy not made super size me. <laughs> Uh, that's it. All right. Well, All I guess right. I'm just going to have to do like a uh, a movie a documentary on how good boneless wings are for you. Or how bad I don't mind you. boneless wings, but they're not wings, and I would never order them over bone-in wings. Anyway, a, a, a discussion for another time. Uh, Clay Ferrero from Local Town. Thank you, Clay. <laughs> All right, brother. Take care, guys. There you go. Clay Ferrero went long, but obviously it was worth it because we had some very important things to discuss there at the end.